Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and in this video we are going to do some fun with python, web crawlers and images. So we want to design a simple crawler that can simply go ahead onto the web page, can crawl onto some images and can download those images onto any given folder. In a couple of my previous videos, uh, I have mentioned this, that how we can crawl onto some web links and all of that. So consider this video as an upgrade onto step next of what we can do with those links and how we can download some of the images. Now, surely we are going to discuss everything line by line, everything is going to be followable and you will be able to understand every single line of code. So we need to understand some of the advanced concept of Python and then we are going to design this crawler and it's going to be super easy to do. It's, it's a really easy process. So in order to do so, first and foremost, we have to work on some of the images that we want to have. So this is my link, pexels.com slash at the rate Hitesh Chaudhary, my own page where I distribute a whole lot of images because I love to click photos. And yes, I got 22 million views so far on just one website, but I have others as well. So, and this reminds me of the sponsor of this video, Proxy Crawl. Proxy Crawl is a website through which you can crawl and they also provide you API for crawling on the website. Website. They have an amazing client list including Shopify, Nike, Oracle, Samsung and we are going to talk about them later on that why people actually need these kinds of services. Uh, that's going to come up later on and thanks to sponsoring for this video so that I'm able to create such videos uh, for my audience. Okay. So go on to this website and specifically we are going to talk on to this link only pexels.com slash Chaudhary. And by the way, if you want to use any of these photos, they are totally free uh, without any credits or anything. Just feel free to use any of them. So this is the link which we are going to crawl. So one thing that we need uh, is going to be this link. So make sure you keep an eye on that. And apart from that, you can see it just loads a whole bunch of photos up here. And I would like to get what is the link of these photos. So I'm going to right click on this and click on the inspect. And I can see up here that whenever there is an image link up here, it always starts with uh, images.pexels.com slash photo slash and then comes up the number. And this is a pattern you're going to notice when you're going to click on every single photo. You're going to notice this is a pattern which this website follows to load up all these images. So on this entire web page, there are so many links and every link is going to start with HTTPS images.pexels.com uh, slash photos and then some other things. So this is my expression which I need to worry about to get all these links. So step number one, the goal number one is to uh, get all these links which are shown on the web page and the step number two is to download all these images onto a certain folder. Now for downloading, we have a variety of options. We have some third party libraries as well, but we can actually do that by simply file handling process as well. So let's go ahead and have some fun with up here. Okay, so I'm gonna just move this up here onto my other screen, which we don't need right now. And But one thing we definitely need to have is a little bit discussion up here. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and I'm gonna just clean that up. I was just practicing a few stuff before making this video uh, so that I can teach you in a proper manner. So one thing that we need to understand up here is enumeration. So enumeration is something in Python which is less discussed in the usual course because this is more over like an intermediate advanced topic is, this is not much, this is a way how you iterate over something uh, onto this. So I'm gonna just first and foremost, I'm gonna just quit this so that it cleans up all of my existing memory and I'm gonna fire up my Python 3 terminal. You don't need to do this, you just need to watch this because we'll be doing this one more time. So let's just say this is gonna be a simple my list and simply a list up here. And this is gonna contain a few strings, uh, things that I do daily in my life, uh, which is definitely including a code part, uh, this is not the daily stuff, but I still try to hit at least three to four times a week. Uh, gym, uh, definitely eat, and uh, probably one more, which is making videos. I make a lot of videos up here. Okay, so this is my list, basic list. And in order to loop through, we have a variety of options. I can simply go ahead and say for uh, L, in, L in my list and just go ahead and say uh, print L. So this is a basic way of how we uh, iterate through over any list. Nothing big deal. We have already seen this so many times. But with enumerate, uh, we get a more power to iterate over anything. For example, let me go ahead and do this again. Uh, let's just say for L in uh, my list, we used to do this one, but now we are going to use something different. We are going to use enumerate, which is a keyword which we can introduce up here. And then you can provide your iteratable. So there we go, my list. 
and when I go ahead and do this for L in enumerate and just like that, and I try to print this list, you are going to notice something different, not drastically different, but something different up here, that we are also getting these indexes, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this is what enumerate does. It gives you ability of all these things. Now surely at this place of L, I can mention the index and can print out the index separately as well. Uh, but this is the thing that you should know because this is what we'll be using in a minute. Okay, this is all clear up, so no big deal. We are ready to go. Okay, now in order to uh, do this scrolling or crawling, <laughs> we are gonna need a couple of libraries up here. So the first and foremost, my favorite one is uh, BS4, which is beautiful, uh, beautiful soup four. We are going to import everything from here. Okay, once we are having this, we also are gonna need uh, one thing more, which is request. So I'm gonna say I need request. I'm gonna call this as simply RQ for request. Now, BS4 is a library which helps you to just get entire web page as a text format and parse that as HTML or any other format that you want. Request helps you to send that request onto the web page. Okay, that is all cleared up and we are also going to need one more module which is OS. OS is an operating module, operating system module which helps you to create some directory. I don't want to just lay off my images all over the place, I want to store them in a particular folder. That is why I'm having it. Also, I need to write some file in my disk. That's why I am using this OS module. Okay. So now it's time that we send out some of the requests. So I'm going to call this as simply a request to web to R2. You can call it R1, R2, Superman, whatever you like. It's just a variable. And then this RQ that we have imported has a lot of options that you can see up here. Get, post, session, request, a whole lot of them. We don't need much of them, we just need a get request up here. And this requires you to pass on a string up here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to bring up my screen up here. I'm gonna copy this uh, link up here and I can just go throw it back up here. And we are going to just paste it up here. So this is the link from where I want to get some stuff, okay? And request library, this RQ is going to send a request on the web page and will get it back. Pretty easy stuff. Now we are going to use a soup. Now, this is again a variable, you can call it anything, but we usually like to call it as soup. Uh, you can call it as soup, soup2, but since I'm calling it as request to web, I'm calling it as soup2, but you can call it as soup as well, no big deal there. Okay, now we're going to include a, a property from this beautiful soup, uh, which is getting this entire web page in, uh, we usually get the text, uh, this entire web page in the text format. We want to parse that in the HTML format because once we get that into an HTML format, then only we can extract all these images link, okay? So we're gonna say, hey, uh, you know what? Beautiful soup is up here. Now this R2, the request that we just met, uh, is actually gonna be in the text format, uh, but we want to parse that into HTML. So this is again coming up from the documentation of the beautiful soup, so I can use HTML parser. This is now gonna convert everything into uh, a parsing or a format of HTML. Okay, that is all done. Now I'm gonna create a simple empty uh, array of links that is gonna appear, okay? In this links array, I'm gonna populate all the images link in a moment. So how we can do that? We can simply create a variable. We're gonna call this as X. <laughs> really, that's not a good name to call up a variable, but this is just for example, I'm gonna call that as X. So now, Take up your soup, whatever you have called that. I'm gonna call this as soup2. And then we are going to select. Now what you really want to select from this entire web page. So we're gonna go up here. And I'm gonna say that I want to select all the images link. And all those images link who have some kind of source. So I'm gonna simply say src and then I'm gonna use a regex up here that is gonna be equal to, and I'm just basically trying to match the HTML tag that I just saw. So the tag that I saw up here was https colon slash slash images dot pixels dot com slash photos. And in case you remember, just just within a few just a few moments ago, I saw you, I show you that this was the image link which was common. Yes, of course, the image was way bigger. The link was, but this is like I want to select all the links which are similar to this link on the entire web page. Okay, so now that my selector is all ready, 
uh, I can go ahead and use this selector to populate link in my links. So I'm going to simply say for uh, IMG, you can call it anything. It's just a variable name, just like we saw for L in my list, just similar to that. We're going to simply say for images in X, X is going to be in populated. So, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And what we're going to do is we are simply going to take this array, which is links, and we are going to use a method append. And we are going to append it with uh, all the images that we have got it. Uh, and from the SRC. Okay, so this is a plain simple format that we are having. Again, I have discussed more about this, like how we are getting all these arrays of source and everything. In a couple of my previous videos, uh, you can check them out as well. Uh, this is like basic stuff. Now, the moment of the truth, what I want is I want to print all the links that I was able to append in this link. So uh, let's just go ahead and do classic print up here. So in order to do so, we are going to simply say for L in links. And I want to print that. So I'm going to simply go ahead and say print L. Okay, so things are going a little bit good so far, then we will be able to print out some links. Otherwise, we are going to debug that again, programming is a part. Uh, of debugging. Uh, I, I usually say debugging is a part of programming, but no. So we're going to go ahead and just grab this and I'm going to run that with Python 3. If you are on the Windows, you just have to say Python because you have just Python 3 installed. I hope so. And we are going to run this file, which is crawler.py. And it's going to take a second, but we are able to grab all these images. Okay, so a whole lot of images are coming up. So uh, there we go, pretty good and pretty nice. Uh, but one thing that you will notice here that we are having a, a width of 500. So these are the basic image that's come up. Surely in order to grab like higher resolution image, we have to craft this code more complex uh, as what we are having here. Okay, uh, this is decent. This is decent. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this because I don't want to see them again. My things are working fine. So step number one is done. I was able to grab all the links from the web and I was stored that up here. Now what I'm going to do next, I want to take those links and I want to save that photo in a folder. So step number two, let's move on to that. So first and foremost, we are going to use an OS module and it has a property .mkdir to make any directory. So I'm going to create a directory that is going to say uh, Hitesh uh, underscore photos. So you can call it anything. It's just going to create a folder for you. It's that easy in Python. And I'm also going to declare a variable i that is going to start with one. And we can actually go ahead and uh, you're going to need uh, this variable in a minute because the index is something that I will take and will save the photos with the name of that index. You'll understand that in a second. So first and foremost, we are going to have for a for loop, we're going to call this as simply index and image underscore link uh, in enumerate remember I told you about the enumerate uh, just a moment ago and we're going in we are going to enumerate over this links array okay once we are enumerating over that we are going to put up a condition because I don't want to download like all the images if you want to download all the images that's fine also but I want to go ahead and grab uh, less images so I'm going to say if I is less than or equal to 10 because I want to grab only 10 images I'm going to go ahead and say that this image underscore uh, data, the variable that I've just created, is going to come up from rec dot get. And we have to get from this image link. Remember, our array is storing all the image link. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is request you can have an access to this content. This actually can grab all the content which is stored at that link. And then you have to explicitly mention that what you want to do with that. So what I want to do with that is uh, with open and then I'm going to open a folder uh, which I've already created. I'm going to call this as Hitesh underscore photo. So it's going to look for the folder uh, Hitesh underscore photo will open that folder and I'll just put a slash so that we go inside that folder. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to simply concatenate it with a string. Okay, this string is going to be responsible for saving these images. And surely you can use other modules to generate a random name of the images. But since I do have access to this index, I can use this index and I'm going to add a plus one because index starts from a zero. I don't want to call my image as zero dot JPEG. I want to call it as one dot JPEG. Okay. 
And once this is being done, I'm going to concatenate it further uh, with a dot JPG. Otherwise, there will be no extension up here. So I'm forcing it to have a JPEG extension. And of course, in order to write it further, I have to use the write property. So I'm going to say write binary uh, plus so that it writes it up as here. And I'm going to say as f uh, simply to have uh, a simple file. And once I'm into this one, I'm going to simply say f dot write. So this is the file handling module. And that is going to write image underscore data. There we go. Uh, really simple. But once I'm outside of this, I can actually shrink this a little bit so that you can see it on one line. Or I can just close this. Yeah, this is better. Okay. So this is what we are having, we are storing the data. But since we are into this if conditional, and if the image was successfully able to write on my disk, then I want to update this I variable because that's what is uh, keeping me inside this loop with a conditional. So all I have to do is simply say I is going to be plus equals one, or you can simply say, there are a lot of ways to update this variable, I'm not going to do much of that. Okay, what is going to happen in the else part? Else part is like the most easiest one. All I have to do is f dot close. So I'm going to close this uh, file handling thing. And I'm going to simply write a break. There we go. So, so simple. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try it. And again, I, I just made a mistake. It's not req, it's rq. Because I imported that as rq. Okay, so looks pretty simple. If I haven't made any typo, I think I made a typo up here. Nope. Okay, so this is uh, all good. But again, it can be messed up. We need to tweak the things up a little bit. We need to debug that a little bit. It's all okay. Now we are going to go ahead and open that up. So let's just hit control terminal. And I am going to open up uh, this one. And let's just run this file again, and see if we are able to grab something up here. So there we go. Uh, and there we go, it creates a new folder, it says Hitesh photo. And we were able to grab a one, two and three, if I just click on that, yes, of course, these are my photos, I have clicked them uh, personally. And yep, they are beautiful photos. So there we go, a really simple uh, Python crawler up here. Surely it can crawl more photos, but restricting it to 10 photos is actually better. Now this brings us to another exciting thing that I was able to grab these 10 photos, but what about when you have something like captchas in uh, is as a hurdle when you want to scroll these things, maybe uh, somebody is blocking your crawling things uh, based on your IP because you are sending too many of the automated requests. So in these conditions, let's bring up this guy up here. Uh, in these conditions, uh, websites like proxy crawl, and there are hundreds of others as well, but this happens to be our sponsor. So we're going to talk about them. They provides you the code which helps you to run these automated tasks. Uh, over through their APIs, they manage all these things like avoiding the captchas. Uh, they also manage how to uh, just whitelist your IP addresses, and a whole bunch of other things. So a lot of clients use them, uh, including Spotify, including Nike, Samsung, Oracle, they have a good client list, and they gives you and what more uh, is interesting up here when you sign up to there, and you enter the coupon code Hitesh, which is my name, uh, all in caps, then you get more additional requests so that you can try out their product. You don't need to buy them right away. Uh, you can simply try out with my coupon code and just go ahead and there is a link in the description section, you can just click on that. And you can try that out. Uh, they gives you some of the API documentation as well, their token as well, so that you can fire up some of the requests as well. Uh, so there we go, they have some things up here. Uh, one thing I would like to mention up here, they do provide you some of the code as well. But I'm not really super happy with the code and the documentation that they are giving. I think this can be improved, uh, like significantly. This is not the code that I'm super happy, at least on the Python side on the Node.js side. It's okay, it's pretty decent. But on the Python side, it's not really good. They could have given more example and all of that. Uh, they give you more example of how you can do crawlings and user agent page weight, including uh, the crawlings on uh, websites like Instagram, Facebook, Amazon, and now is the time of shopping. Uh, a lot of big sales are coming up. So you can simply create a, a simple 
uh, code that can compare for maybe a laptop onto Amazon and Flipkart and other websites as well. So pretty easy. We do that all the time in our boot camps as well. So there we go. Uh, go ahead, check them out. The link is in the description section. And thank you so much for sponsoring this uh, channel because we want to create more videos and your help, your sponsorship help us to deliver more awesome quality videos. So that's it for this video. In case you liked and enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video.